Hello and welcome to another episode of Tide F1 Pod with me, Shez, and you, Amar. How are you doing, mate? I'm doing great. How are you? Yeah, not bad. Yeah, you came um, you came right off a, a, an, an awesome uh, shakedown with, with Cam and Tomo and uh, Nasher from the Quick Stop Pod. Shout out to all of those guys, by the way. Mate, they were great. What a great episode that was. I was just in awe of the knowledge in front of me. That said, I'm very disappointed with you. I saw you take a lot of hate for Charles Leclerc and not push back at all, man. I, I'm deeply, deeply, deeply disappointed in you. I, I think I gave a lot of hate to Charles Leclerc. You did there um, too, by the way. What, what's up yeah. with you, like turning your back on him? Like this is traitor stuff, man. Uh, sometimes the argument is more important than principle. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at that. Here on the Tired F1 pod, we're, our principles are up for sale. Fred will come get us. <laughs> Please. Please do. <laughs> Please. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Well, we have we have a few things to cover today, don't we? Uh, yeah, but but I thought that you know, given that we're now in the summer break, it'd be a nice idea to just revisit re- revisit some of our uh, predictions, but certainly some of our impressions from earlier on in the season. I thought actually the most interesting team at the moment um, is McLaren. They have a great car and they've got two drivers that, that we think should have should be able to take the opportunity that a great car provides um they've only got two wins on the board one apiece um do they have the best team then though i mean oh well, i don't know if, as... I, yeah i mean i don't know if they've got the best team and, and and that's the question are the drivers squandering the the the, the car um that's question one and question two we we sort of talked about um which one of those two we thought was going to come out on top um and we can we can have a chat now about whether we think that's still valid or not so i'm going to kick off the first bit of it for you amar um mclaren ostensibly uh in the in the last three four races probably since miami have on balance probably had the 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 the, the fastest car on the grid right now Mm -hmm. and yet we've still only got two wins what's going on yeah i agree with you i think i think you can you can go a step further in establishing that mclaren have now (laughs) at least at this point in the season the quickest car at least on sundays that may not be the case on saturdays but um, evidently they do pretty good with tire wear generally in the way the mclaren drives and um, they've got some certain advantages. Their starts or race starts are not always great, but that's not that seems to be a, a bit of their weakness, uh, perhaps the way that the car is set up or the way the drivers operate. So I think you can say that. And and absolutely, we in the aftermath of Belgium, right, and, and even Silverstone called them out on, on some poor strategy. I think they've, they've botched at least three wins, I think, on, and, and those would have been on merit, by the way. The Silverstone one for sure, even in Belgium, they 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 could have they could have gotten the win had they been a little bit more, um, a little bit more brave, uh, a little bit more aggressive. And I think blasphemy, and mm. to some extent, is what they've done with Lando, and that they've cost him some valuable points in the championship, both in how they sort of orchestrated Hungary, and also in in the Belgian Grand Prix where they they should have come ahead of Max, given where Max started and given where Lando was. So. Uh, I think that there's there's a lot of uh, question marks there. All the while, Zach is throwing mud at, on on Red Bull too. So we should we should add that for context too, right? He is he's not stopped the mud slinging uh, with Red Bull while also trying to secure maybe an engine deal at some point. Who knows? But there you have it. I, I, so I I don't mind that so much actually. Like, like the Zach uh, slinging mud, I think it's just part of the course for a um, CEO team owner. Uh, of a team that's that's doing well, Andre Stella, by by comparison, who you know who just got a contract extension this week, um, has been a paragon of of subtlety, though, hasn't he? Like he's not. I, I'm I'm really impressed by Andre Stella. I still am, despite all of the strategy nonsense that's been going on at McLaren. He he explains himself very well. He doesn't seem to get like really angry or het up or worked up about stuff, and. Um, and, and and seems to be driving that team in 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 the right direction, and you you expect that over time 
some of the operational and strategic errors that they're having would would iron out. But I agree with you. The ones that they have had recently have been absolute shockers. Uh, Silverstone was was the nadir for me. I thought that was uh, you know the, the discussion they were having over the over the radio uh, with their driver about tires is a is a discussion that should have been had on the pit wall and a result given to the driver it's not the way that they it's not what they did is not how it should be done and the problem for me about that was that they never really learned their lesson because in Hungary we were back at it again pleading with our driver um uh, yeah. like trying to work out what what to what to do <clears throat> i have to say in the aftermath of Hungary, I said that I wasn't too fussed about the the way that the strategy played out. Like I like I understood what they were doing, um, but it was a pretty conservative strategy, well, and but, all of it seems to be about yeah. a team that doesn't feel like they're ready to to to, to win stuff the, yet. The smart thing for them to have done in Hungary would have been to get on the radio at least when Lando's engineer to say, "Hey." Give up, give the position to Oscar right now, and you're free to race the rest of the way. And they had quite a few laps. And look, this is this is something where this is not on the driver. Like I wouldn't blame Oscar for this, but they should have got on 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 the radio with, with him and said, "Look, he was not fast. He was not quick enough. He was clearly the slower driver at the end of the race, despite having fresher tires." Yeah. And so this is a team mistake where. You, look, man, this is why you have to step in as a team and give team orders. It's always easy to do that when there's a market difference between the drivers, <laughs> right? It's easy to tell the slower guy that is incredibly slow or, or not incredibly, but at least, you know, by a margin slower to kind of do that. But they should have got on the radio then and they should have told Lando to either do it fast or not do it at the end. They look, they look really mm -hmm. bad making emotional pleas. I mean, what were they going to do? The next thing they were going to say is, oh, no one's going to show up at your door for your birthday the next time. Like, what, what is that all about? Like, that's crazy. Yeah, I, I, I think that Oscar being slow in that final stint is overplayed a little bit. It's the first time he was behind a car the entire race. Um, and actually, he did to Lando what he, uh, sorry, Lando did to him what he had been doing to Lando the entire race up until that point other than that silly mistake that he had out of turn 11 he, he did yeah right so so that was uh i i don't think you could yeah, have but, been but quicker is... and i think lando probably would have struggled to get past him again anyway lando probably knew that but i do agree with you that his two choices were either come back early you know you know um give him the position back early so he's got enough laps to attack or just be the, the be be aggressive. I mean, you be saw the two Mercedes and, drivers. And don't give the don't give the position back. Full stop. You saw the two Mercedes drivers go at it at the end of the Belgium Grand Prix. Like you could have had two McLaren drivers go on there and say, "Look, be sensible about this." And you know, I I will give you this. Like, I mean, look, <clears throat> um, Oscar beat Lando off the line, right? And that's why he had the race lead, right? Whoever is going to get off the line first there was going to have the race lead, I and mean, that's just typical of Hungary. So it's. But Lando did qualify on pole too. So I, I think that these are very marginal decisions. And again, if I'm the team, if I'm the team, uh, you know, engineer, team principal, whoever I am, I'm leading the team. I'm kind of getting on there and say, hey, look, big picture, man. We have we have the opportunity to put even more pressure on Max, right? Because at the moment, Max still ha is the favorite to win the driver's championship. But you call those results a little bit differently. And that gap seems very, very marginal or very, very manageable rather you're putting even more pressure on Red Bull now. And then Zach can sling even more mud if he wants to, right, at that point. But look, you got to also blame Lando for what happened in Austria, right? We came on in the aftermath of the race and kind of kind of, sort of were, you know, reacting in real time. But upon further reflection, I think we all kind of agree that Lando could have been much better in trying to do the overtake. And he gave up valuable points. I mean, not finishing the race is, is, is you know, is way worse than having even finished somewhere with, with any point scoring position, right? So... Uh, there's some blame to go around for him as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I still think that the Austria thing was him uh, putting a you know putting his marker in the sand, okay. and I can't necessarily blame him for that. Okay, let's talk about the two drivers because um, at the beginning of the season we said Oscar, we think is going to come out on top. I'm going to give you some facts and figures first. First of all, the qualifying head to head. Um, uh, confession here. I haven't done these numbers myself. I've got them from uh, Mark Hughes at motorsport.com. Thank you, Mark Hughes. Um, but 
um, here they are. Anyway, so Lando Norris and uh, Oscar Piastri. Lando is 9-4 uh, up um, in uh, comparable sessions, and that includes sprint qualifying. And that equates to a 0.142% difference. So Lando is 0.142% quicker. Um, just if, if you guys are new to the channel, uh, why do I use percentages rather than lap time? Well, uh, lap time is different for different tracks. So the uh, so the the amount of time that you're quicker than somebody else at Spa so, uh, is uh, is very different. Different to to it's different to if you're that Hungry. that far ahead in Austria, yeah. for example, yeah. right? So you just use so so percentage is correct for uh, the length. Uh, of the lap and just for context um uh, max verstappen is 0 0.568 percent quicker than I mean, sergio perez shocking <laughs> yeah 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 uh and uh george russell is 0 0.115 percent quicker than lewis hamilton right so that that's kind of the ballpark that we're talking about so, th so these guys are 0.142 percent different in terms of pace so you know somewhere in the middle of the pack in terms of uh, the difference between teammates on pace and in the races the um the current head-to-head -head is uh, lando nine oscar five but oscar's big results have come much more recently so there you go. Lander's a bit quicker in qualifying. He's doing better in the races. Uh, we've got it. We've got this wrong, right? Um, I don't think we have. I mean, I think it's a little bit of a toss up, right? I think it depends on where your allegiances lie. I think that um, Oscar fans would argue that he is the the steady hand that that does not get too high or too low give, with the race uh, and or qualifying, and he can he can pull off a very steady <laughs> weekend. A la, uh, quicker Jensen button, maybe a little bit a la Prost ish, maybe, uh, if, if that's how you want to do it. And I think it depends on how you sort of look at this, right? But I, I would just kind of do the eye test, right? And I think that Oscar is a raise the floor type of driver, right? And in that he can he can get more out of the car, even when it's not working at its peak level and, and still get you formidable results, almost like a Carlos Sainz ish kind of role. Um, <clears throat> And on the other hand, Lando is a little bit of a, a hit a home run or, you know, it might be an epic fail kind of guy, maybe almost a Charles Leclerc kind of guy. So maybe there's the parallel with the Ferrari drivers, if anything. Um, and I think that these next 10 race, 10, uh, nine races will be interesting um, and to see see what happens there, because how they finish the season will, will really kind of tell you what, you know, what they are in terms of their ability to chase after a championship. And Look, I think that um, you cannot take anything away from the two drivers or uh, give them extra credit for what the team role has been, right? They've clearly put on a, a very quick car that is formidable against Red Bull and on any given track now. Um, so they should be in the position to be on the podium consistently throughout the rest of the year. Uh, but for me, it's a bit of a toss-up. I don't think there's much separating the two. Ooh. Yeah, let, let me tell you where I, uh, I fall on this. I think I think Lando is a great driver, like really, like top notch. Um, I think his strengths are that he's uh, adaptable to to a very difficult car, and he's able to 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 bring out the best in it. And I think if you're talking about raise the floor versus raise the ceiling, I think he is very much a raise the ceiling kind of driver. Um, in that <clears throat> when that car it gets better, he exponentially gets better with it on a Saturday certainly, but. He has particular weaknesses. The one very obvious one is that on a first lap, he he yeah. seems to to, seems to have an issue, it, yeah. it's it's and it's not an aggression thing. He he seems to call the the play wrong. Like he 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 either defends against the wrong person uh, or he positions his car in the in a way that allows somebody else to get ahead. The two best examples of that are Spain, where he he squeezed Max into the into the grass, allowing George Russell to just steam around the outside, uh, and then in Hungary, where again he was so focused on not losing position that that Piastri just snuck in on the inside and 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 took the position with and. and Let's not get it twisted. Like George's move in Spain was amazing, and Oscar's move in <laughs> Hungary was also brave. 
don't get me wrong, they, they had to work to get those positions, but Lando allowed that situation to happen. And the other thing, the other thing is that there's still that battle hardiness isn't there yet, right? And I could excuse that. I could excuse the 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 the, the fact that he makes sometimes too timid decisions when it comes to wheel to wheel racing if it weren't for the fact that the other guy seems to be inch perfect in wheel to wheel racing and he's been in formula 1 you know lando's been in formula 1 since 2019 oscar's been there since last season yeah. so yeah there's, there's the a little bit of, of pressure, that yeah. <clears throat> whereas oscar oscar's like the 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 sort of rank opposite of that isn't he the on a he, I agree with you. Very much a raise the floor kind of driver. On a Saturday, he he doesn't quite have that last nth nth of speed that 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 Lando does, but it's close, isn't it? Like point one 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 five percent is pretty close. Versus on a on a race day, I think he took a bit of time to get warmed up this season, but in the last few races. You would bank on him being the guy that pulls off a move. I think Miami. I know you hated it, but in Miami, he was he was very very clever in his in the way that he positioned his car and went about his wheel to wheel racing, and it frustrated Carlos to the point that he made a mistake into that final hairpin and uh, and earned himself a penalty trying to go past him. And you can argue what you want about that, but it was Oscar's sort of driving in a slower car that put himself in a position to frustrate Carlos Sainz. And and the way he's on the radio, there's no. He's never flustered. He he's just reporting something. I'm annoyed right now. You can tell from my voice that I'm annoyed right now. It's it's very much like that. Um, and maybe that doesn't make him particularly marketable. Maybe it doesn't make him particularly interesting. I think he is. I think it's actually a really nice comparison with with Lando, who's so emotional and so self deprecating all the time. And I I, I love that. But I think you're. Go on. I was going to say all of this is fair <clears throat> until Oscar has a legitimate chance to win the championship, right? All of this will be tested only then, because right now he's working with house money. Simple as that. I I you say that a lot, but I think that. That, like the more this championship goes on, the more that we're that 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 McLaren have um, opportunities to win races, and the more his teammate misses those opportunities, which he has done on on far too many occasions this season. Oscar then brings himself into this, and I think your Prost comparison is apt. You're not the only person to say that. Um, uh, we I, I I spoke to Law VS when he was on Cameron's channel uh, a few weeks ago, and he he seems to think that the, the the Prost comparison is 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 a good one too. I think I would go further than what he does as well. I think in in Formula One there are two major archetypes. There is the Senna type and there is the Prost type, and the Senna type is <clears throat> is the is the kind of driver that is a raise the ceiling kind of driver. They'll jump in the car week in week out session after session it doesn't matter what they have to be first whether it's a a practice session or q3 they have to be the the the, the first and i think max is the is the current sort of poster boy for that approach right now and lando falls into that whereas the prost approach is very much if i what do i need to do to win i will do the minimum i need to do to win and that sounds like it's like it's damning with faint praise, but it's not. It's it's very much an efficiency kind of, okay, I don't need to bust my gut to get this car that won't get further than fifth to, to second. Like, I, like unless something crazy happens, I'm not going to finish second. I'm going to maximize what I have in front of me and be smart about my strategy choices, be smart about my tire choices, be smart about the way I battle people. That's what Oscar does, right? I think... That's that's kind of what Lewis is right now as well. I think Lewis is very much a, uh, a, a, a the, 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 in the Prost mold in terms mm -hmm. of how he approaches his races, and that comes with experience. He's he's been here longer than only uh, uh, longer than uh, anyone on the, on the grid, other than Fernando, um, and Fernando is very much like that too. But Oscar's been here for a season and a half, and he's doing it now. And I think the the the, the comparison between those two, that very Senna like 
Lantern, that very Frost-like Oscar, I think who you decide you prefer very much depends on where you fall in the Senna Frost debate. I agree with you. Are you picking? Are you picking Oscar to to win moving yeah. forward? Like you picking him ahead of Lander? Okay, fair enough. Um, I said toss yeah. up. Uh, you said you said Oscar. I will say I'm I'm going to tilt the scales slightly in favor of Lando. I think that there's going to be um, um, uh, a new sort of level of maturity, a, a new way of kind of attacking this. And I and I base this not on past data, but just more instincts, more gut and feel. Um, and I think that he's gonna he's gonna come back with uh, with a real sort of um attitude that really goes at max and not having to kind of you know worry about what's behind him but we'll see yeah i mean i worry i worry about that side of things this is because you know lando's had this issue since day dot yeah you know, but they but they, they haven't been on the scene the, quite quite the, quite in that in a in a serious way up until six races point, ago. Point, yeah, point, so. taken, but, point, point taken but point taken but he he was similar in his F two season. Like he he was he was on course to win a rookie Formula Two. Championship, right? And George, okay, he, he he drove an absolute blinder in the final race of that season, George. But um, but over the course of that season, you expected Lando to come out on top, and yet he didn't, for reasons like this. Whereas Oscar, if you look at his junior career, has been. You know, wherever he's had a deficiency, he's found that deficiency, worked on it, and just got and, and just then made it a strength. Qualifying was a problem for him in F two. You know, then he won, then he got a couple of poles, and suddenly he was you couldn't get him off the front row. That that's that's the kind of level of learning and adaptability that you see from a driver in that Prost mold that they can understand, analyze, and then uh, and then make rational decisions. That's where I worry about Lando. Yeah, but bit. I mean, we we got to give um, these things a chance to kind of work itself out and grow. Like every yeah. experience is different. I, you know, F two is different than 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 F one, and this is also a lot on the team. I mean, some of these past re results are are just as much on the team as anyone else. So, I, I have I have faith in that. Recognizing what what's in front of him, we'll, we'll kind of see another version of Lando. And we again, even Max when he was at the scene, he it took years for him to kind of mature and kind of get to where he's at and then was finally able to mount that challenge in 21. A lot of it had to do with the team as well. And I think that this, these things just take time and we, you cannot expect for them to kind of happen over, you know, over the course of months or weeks only. So this takes time. We'll see. I, I guess I'm going with Lando, huh? Oof. There we go. We have, yeah, we have no consensus. We have Lando. We do. In the American uh and oscar on that bombshell um as usual if you like what we're doing please like please subscribe please leave us a comment which one of these two do you think is going to come out on top at the end of the season uh, we read all the comments as usual and we will reply to as many as we possibly can and we will see you guys in the next one